three. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> you, 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 see, you see the things that you'd have to read. You'd have to read the stuff on the blackboard backwards. Awesome. You have uh, to write that. <laughs> Yeah. Or is it? Does it show up? Is is the is the text readable back there? Yeah. Say expert. Much more so than in previous ones uh, classes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like in a mirror. I see. Ah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I I'm, I want to share my screen most of the time anyway. So I'll I'm sure I can figure out how to do that. Show the screen. That awesome effect. Brain up cheese. Okay. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah, that should uh, should be it. Okay. So so today I'd like to talk about random number generation. And uh, for crypto, there, there's a couple of things you need for random number generation. You need uh, this is really distracting me. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. I I can probably set somehow. Uh, <clears throat> So r r random numbers. Uh, the, the deal is there's a, there's a million different sources of random numbers, right? I mean, there's there's like rand. There's uh, she, so so uh, we're going to look at some of these things called lin linear congruential random number generators, which uh, have have lots of nice properties. I mean, the, the easy one everybody's seen hopefully is like rand. What do you all know about rand? There are bad things about it. Yeah. What, what's bad about rand? It's uh, a linear regression random number generator. Depends on the system, actually. Okay. Some oh, it is system defined. It's like a Mac. Yeah. It's by default. It goes up by incremental amounts, so it's like one ten. So, so RAN is kind of a portability hassle, right? Because it does not give you the same result on different platforms. It's not the standardized in language. What I can I, I call uh, S RAND of zero. And each time I call rand, I'm going to get a different set of numbers. But it's actually the same set of numbers each time. Ooh, for example, well, let's see. I might as well build, build one of these. So I'm going to call so 10 times. I'm going to call rand first. I'm going to just print out the result from rand. And uh, on my machine, this is actually these are fairly big numbers. And uh, if I s rand of zero. I'm going to get one stream, so we, we run this stuff, so, so th th there, there it is. If I run it a second time, same numbers or different numbers? Yeah, so it's the same numbers as long as I seed it with the same uh, the same value. So we run it again. Again, the last number was 421. My network has been really flaky to lawyer.cs. So we'll have to wait, I guess. Is it loaded? I don't know if it's loading. You might have just done it. Can you do like 11? Exact same. Can you do 11? No, it's still waiting. Okay, there we go. So, okay, 421. Right. Uh, if I srand of 1, this is kind of a weird thing about the, this is the Linux, uh, the Linux srand. Same thing. 0 and 1 give you the same output. I'm not sure why they chose that. Uh, but if I do 2, suddenly I get a totally different stream of numbers. Right. So, so this is, uh, so pluses, minuses. It's fast. It's very, it's pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 extremely low, like programmer brain intensive, right? You just call rand, you get some numbers, right? And uh, the, one advantage, right? I can call srand with a known value, and I get a known sequence of random numbers. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of programs where people do srand of like time, for example, returns it time in seconds, and this is relatively okay because, uh, but now every time I run this, I'm going to get a different set of numbers. So uh, pluses and minuses, but I mean, sometimes this is what people want, right? Or this is what they think they want for like crypto. Uh, big downside with this: if if you're doing so, so, you have some big complicated program, getting random numbers, and the program crashes in the middle. You change the code and you run it again, and it doesn't crash this time. Did you fix the bug, <laughs> or did it just happen to not happen? I mean, you just didn't get the numbers that caused it to happen again. So, right, uh, you never get repeatability. If uh, you're not seeding the same value, so for scientific programming, actually the the right thing to do is to just seed it with a constant, right, like six, and then that's just it, right. And then if you want to run a different experiment, you seed it with seven. You want to run another experiment, you seed it with eight, etc. Uh, so so easy enough, but uh, uh, so the reason people call SRAN time of zero is so that they have the uh, they have an unpredictable stream. Right, and, and it's it's unpredictable in a forward sense, right? Uh, there's no way for me to really figure out what the heck it's going to be ten seconds from now, other than just see the random generator with you know ten seconds from now and see what see what the values come out is. That's 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 what pseudo randomness is all about, right? Uh, how much actual like 
cryptographic randomness is there? Particular retrospective. Yeah. I think in rank it's really bad. Like, if you know. Yeah. So if they know the time, or if they know what your computer thinks the time is, they know exactly what stream you're going to come up with. Right. That's just that's a, that's a deterministic thing, right? Uh, so that, that's uh, that's a problem, right? There, there have been a number of bugs where this is uh, this has meant that you had actually no security whatsoever. Right? Like so, here I, I take these ten integers. That's a 320-bit key. That's awesome, right? That's more entropy than anybody could you know ever ever want. How much entropy is there really? It turns out, well, it's zero if they know what time it was. Because for example, you know, your machine ever does a timestamp, right? H how often do you do you get timestamps off of anything? A lot of web browsers, they say, oh, I have the version of this page from this time, right? And if, if they saw you just, you know, loading that page that, you know, that time ago, they know exactly what the value of your clock is. So, in, in, in fact, you know, it, it might look like there's 300 bits of entropy. There's zero bits of entropy, right, if, if, they, can, if they can guess what your clock is. Uh, the other problem with uh, S random time and zero, I, I've seen a lot of programs where, People are like, S rand of time. So here's uh, here's a funny thing. Sure. I'm just going to call S rand of time is zero. That gives me a different value, right? I run it. You know, I test it a couple times. It's like, yeah, yeah, different value every time, which is awesome. I run this thing 10 times in a row, and what do I get? Bah, 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 the same exact value. Why? And then I run this again, and this is like, and it's different, but it's the same. What's it happening? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what is time return? Seconds, Seconds since epoch. Mm -hmm. This takes less than one second. So time has not changed. I just realized you guys can't actually see. <laughs> Sorry, people calling in. Uh, let's see. So uh, right. So so how much entropy is there from Rand? It's it's uh, it's not very much. So yeah. I think that it, so most random number generators will loop after a while. I think mm. rand, some of the patients of rand loop so quickly. Some are terrible. You can literally yeah, enumerate yeah. the 32 bit numbers, the entire sequence, of everything, and then like just look and then see what's going to happen if you have like a long sequence. The, 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 there have been some random number generators that are like famously bad enough that, because uh, like for example, they will never give you even numbers because they just don't they don't work with whatever output even numbers. Uh, I mean that's that's insane. Uh, clearly not very random, right? If you know the low bit is one, just just know it. It's guaranteed, uh, right? So, so uh, how much how much cryptographic randomness is there after I call S rand? I mean, uh, assume instead of time, I'm going to use some high resolution timer or something. It depends on if someone can get that if they can get one mm, no, 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 no. random, if then they can figure out. So, I mean, say I've just checked out of the, the Super Vault, and the Super Vault returned 17, which they could never possibly predict. Right? So I ask around to the Super Vault number, which number, I generate random numbers from that. I'm pretty good, right? I mean, those look pretty, pretty dang good. If you don't know the number 17, tough to, tough to find those things. And they're zeros, too, so. Yeah, yeah they're, they're zeros. Zero. 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 Uh, but, like, how many times does those like sequence of numbers there show up? Like if they can see, if they can figure out. It's surprisingly good, right? So, so you, you can look for stuff that kind of draws your eye, like there's a bunch of leading zeros on that number, and I can run like a thousand, as many as that run will print out. So I can run this thing, and um, you can look for that, that sequence again. So how often does that happen? And it turns out uh, so that happens exactly once. Uh, so, so I mean, it's 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 r relatively competently done. Uh, the Windows version of Rand only outputs a 16-bit random number, so it's going to repeat. I mean, the output will be repeat more often, but it's not in the same sequence. And I think it's usually like a billion calls before it repeats. So that's uh, it's okay. Uh, here's the big problem, though. Uh, S Rand takes an int. The whole random number sequence is completely determined by that int. How many ints are there? Two to the 32. How long does it take to check 4 billion ints? Depends on how fast your machine is. Even if it's a fairly slow machine, I mean, a few seconds, right, if you don't have to do that much, right? I mean, you, you basically, you S-RAND with zero. You see if the first number matches. Nope. 
Try the next number. Try the next number. Right? Just uh, work, work your way through them. Right. So that's so. So you're in big trouble, actually. Right. Uh, SRAN doesn't have enough. There's just not enough data there. Right. To actually have, have uh, the state of the random number generator is one int, which means that uh, you, you there's no way that can ever possibly be, uh, be secure. So I, I've seen people use this. Uh, I mean, you can you can actually easy enough to to get something that kind of looks like it's been encrypted. So here's uh, here's something that looks like it's been encrypted. So this is the RAND encryption scheme. Don't use this. It's a terrible idea. Uh, so I'm going to call RAND. I mean, the, the key is totally what I, what I see at SRAND. Uh, so, so then then I have a key. I call RAND. I get eight bits of pseudo random data. I'm going to get, it's going to be totally unprintable. I'm not going to be able to paste it back in if I, uh, if I use all eight bits. So I drop down to five bits, which means that if I just mess with the five bits, then it's still printable. So now I encrypt or decrypt, right? So that's uh, that's a fairly uh, easy operation, like XOR with this basically rand key. And now I'll append that to my string, spit the string out, and then just repeat for however many how many. So I, I read to me or dot to be. I output, you know, n tilde g j t u. So it's very fairly good. I mean, this looks encrypted. It's all printable, but that's. Uh, we're stuck with that. Uh, so, so the uh, I mean, interesting fact about this, right? I take that that cipher text, I input that as uh, plain text, <coughs> and it turns out encrypting. So this is the code to encrypt, and uh, decrypting is the same operation, which is funny. What? What? Why is that? Well, if you just XOR, you would have it like seven, right? Three, XOR it was seven. I get four. Four, XOR it was seven. I get three again. That's actually true for any seven and three and four. <laughs> 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 like there's only one seven and only one three. Only one, <laughs> I mean, whatever, like if they were generic. Like, for, for, for large like values of three. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, so, so, so in general, A, X or B, X or B again, that's A, right? So you've, you've actually you've wrapped back around. So that's part of it. So it, uh, nothing red on the blackboard is visible at all. It's all universe. Anyway, uh, <coughs> it, it is its own inverse, yeah. So if I encrypt and then run it and then I take that stuff and run again the decrypt, hey, that's, that simplifies my user interface. I don't have to say whether you're encrypting or decrypting, that's, that's good. Bad, bad things about this? That even possible? Yeah. Somebody's yeah. got to decrypt it eventually, so they got to know how to encrypt it. Or, <laughs> I don't know. It just sounds useless. Oh, oh well, it's symmetric. That's it's it's a, this is a really symmetric cipher, right? Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's nice because you know. Well, first off, you know mathematically you will never destroy data. Right? Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. That, that is a it's its own inverse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and you still have to know the key. So if you don't know this magic number seventeen, then that. Uh, uh, so we're actually going to decrypt. So so now we get a totally different string of crap, and I have to use that crap in order to get a decrypt. So if I do this, yeah, okay. And if so, if I take this and I feed it back to the cipher, then I could get this out. So hey, I mean, that's, yeah, but XOR is really fast too. So XOR is very fast. So it's like just try all four billion again. Yeah, right. yeah so, so I mean, people can certainly you can certainly cycle through the keys. I mean, explicit key space enumeration is definitely bad. So okay, one so, thing we know, don't do that. Rand only gives what sixteen bits? You said uh, on Windows is only sixteen bits. I'm only using eight bits. So. Yeah, so I mean, small key. You're actually only five. Yeah. Well, the so, so generally speaking, you want to have like a great big key, like hundred bits long, and it doesn't really matter how much of that you pull off at a time. I mean, you can operate on little teeny blocks, or you can operate and take Wait, that whole. Equals the key, like right off. Well, I guess. Okay. I see. Is there going to be some noticeable difference between each one? I mean, oh, whoa! Uh -oh. So Differential <laughs> cryptanalysis. So, so. Uh, more than one key so, so, so this, this crazy thing is the encryption of to be or not to be. So if I uh, if I switch this from to be, if so I'm going to make this to AE. So the question is how much changes, right? And uh, it turns out the answer is uh, that changes, right? So if you compare the old to the new, 
So to be or not to be, or to be or not to be, right? So, so um, hmm. that's a problem right there. In other words, the uh, the plain text and the ciphertext, there's a one-to-one -one bit correspondence between these things. And in particular, right, uh, I, if, if, I was, uh, if, if I was an attacker, I know I can mess up one letter, right? I can make that instead of not, it's going to be some other letter if I make this an OK. Uh, and, uh, and I'll be darned, right? So I've just, I've just messed up that one letter. And in fact, uh, let's see, if, if we would figure out the XOR difference between these things. Mop to be, uh, let's see. Uh, <coughs> I always failed alphabetization. That was always that was my bane in uh, in school. Uh, let's see. So so instead of F, how about I do a do it, sure. okay F and uh, X Y Z and N. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think hopefully this will be mop to be. No, I miss. Oh, I. I all right. Want oh that that went the wrong direction. Uh, X Y Z okay. Sorry, just uh, mod mod to be so so uh, easy enough to actually figure out what the heck you're changing and to uh, to be able to modify the the, the the signal with no other changes. So uh, bank communicating with ATM using an XOR style encryption. So they just deposited ten cents into their account. And you don't even have to have targeted ability, right? If you know where the amount field is because they just deposited nine cents and then ten cents, they can see, oh, okay, there's the changes happening in the amount field. Then they can go and just stomp the high bits of that uh, that area, and they can say, you just deposited, you know, four hundred million dollars into an ATM somehow. <laughs> cool, <laughs> right? Uh, so, 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 in other words, uh, modifying messages in transit, big dangerous thing, right? Uh, and, and same deal, right? Bank says no. Bank says yes, right? As to like, give this guy money right now. So they withdraw from an overdraft drawn account, and they just say, yep, there's the authentication code. Flip. <laughs> right. And I can say, I can turn a no into yes, no, no problem. So, so uh, this is this is bad, right? There's no bit mixing happening, here, right? Compare this to RC5. Right? So RC5, you're actually having sort of bits going back in. So, so yeah. Uh, don't do this. This is a really bad idea as, as far as encryption. So, sound, sounds relatively good, but in practice, it's uh, not, not good. Uh, so, uh, random number generation, probably not uh, uh, not super useful for directly encrypting data with XOR. Uh, if you want to make this thing relatively secure, what, uh, what could you do? Not use it. <laughs> don't don't do this. Yeah, that's, that's a legit. <laughs> you need the very good amount that you change it by, or else. I mean, yeah. you're trying to make differential cryptanalysis as hard as possible, right? So just change yeah. the amount yeah. that you change. Data dependent bit shifts. Some some sort of some sort of data dependence some, somewhere in there. Uh, I claim there's a really easy way to fix this thing, right? So uh, when I'm encrypting it, I come up with the ciphertext. If I just re s ran here, right? I, I reinitialize the random number generator, and I'm going to take basically the ciphertext that I came up with, uh, and 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 this is what I'm going to get. Let's see, I mean, you can do this either any any way you want. So I'm I'm going to uh, I'm going to reinitialize the uh, the uh, the thing with uh, uh, seventeen. So, so the trick is now each letter is dependent, uh, the, the encryption of each letter is dependent on how the previous letter came out. So, uh, so I'll try this, and now uh, nothing actually matches up again, which is great. So uh, a couple things to try. One is differential. So E or not to B. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing is to I'm going to modify uh, one letter and then see see what that happens. So, so basically, uh, uh, differential analysis, and it turns out uh, yeah. So uh, past the point of the up to the point of the change where we're actually the same, which is probably not that good. But afterwards, you notice these are pretty much unrelated, right? And uh, X Y would be the same. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Neither of these is the actual decrypt. Is this because I copied and pasted wrong? Yeah, that's not. 
relationship change. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll get the. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna get the. You have, you have the old cipher text from the old cipher <coughs> going to the new cipher. Uh, I, I I I went ahead and copied the new cipher text in there. Oh. Okay. So th there's a new, 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 yeah. Uh, decryption is now not the same operation as encryption, which is actually really good. So, so for for, uh, for for decryption, you actually have to take, you have to first do the SRAN and then do all this stuff and, 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 and vice versa. So and it's it, it is possible because you have the ciphertext when you're doing the encryption. So, but but uh, again, the order the order uh, you have to do it the other way around. So so this so in other words, uh, th this this general technique, right? Feeding the output of the cipher back into the input of the cipher is actually a good way to take a really weak cipher and to try and beef it up a little bit, right? So, so the, the, they call this cipher block chaining, right? CBC, and it, it's it's a really common trick for taking I mean, virtually anything. R R RC5 is actually fairly weak. AES is fairly weak. Uh, if you basically just uh, you treat it as here's this block of input, I'm going to run some transmission on it, fixed transmission based on the key, I'm going to get one fixed block of output. But the, the, the big problem is, I mean, differential script analysis, modification, all, all sorts of stuff uh, goes goes wrong with that. Uh, so, so uh, a lot of real ciphers actually just do this trick, right? and it's uh, again, uh, I mean, this is still probably not the, the best idea, but uh, uh, but this is a way to, to strengthen strengthen things up. So I made I made one change there, and then it just uh, so, so uh, one interesting fact about this: if you're using cipher cipher block chaining, basically, uh, you uh, uh, any any modifications to the message are really going to screw up the end of the message. So you really don't want to say a uh, big long memo saying like why uh, you know this bank account should not get withdrawn, and then bottom line saying nope, and then that's that's the end because then I mean you might be able to potentially modify that thing. In fact, you, you want to have like at the end you should have uh, sincerely you know bank president whatever whatever, and uh, and then. At the very end, you just have like the standard sign-off message saying like uh, end of transmission. If you don't get the end of transmission, you get gibberish. You know something was screwed up in the, in the, uh, in the middle of the thing. Yeah. So uh, cipher block chaining, a uh, really common way to uh, to strengthen up a weak cipher. Uh, and I claim that this sort of randomness, uh, so, so rand alone, not necessarily a terribly good uh, uh, approach for this thing. But the the stuff that you do inside rand, it turns out, is Really similar to the way that you manipulate uh, 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 data in, inside a cipher. So if you look at what these things are, so uh, so, so, so here, here's Rand. Inside Rand, I, I couldn't actually find the glibc Rand. The thing listed in Wikipedia as the glibc Rand is not. Uh, but uh, there there are a bunch of these that are what they call linear congruential uh, random number generators. So the linear business is that I'm just doing Basically, I, I take my old state, like from SRAND, I multiply by a constant, I add a constant, and then I wrap around mod some number. Okay, I, I can wrap around. Uh, let's see. Uh, in this case, yeah, uh, yeah, so it's just a it's just a big percent. What what's the deal here? How could that ever work? Does, does that look like that would be useful? Yeah, the next state equals old state times. I mean, multiplying by a constant, adding a constant, and then modding by a constant. So linear. It's linear. Linear congruence. Linear. Yeah. This is the linear part, right? Uh, yeah. Times a plus c. This is the congruential part. Is I uh, take it mod, mod some. Just a lot harder now. The analysis on it. The mod, the mod, yeah, the mod is actually pretty important there. I mean, you can you can try a lot of these things like so. Uh, so my super vault was 17, and then I'm going to just take super vault. I don't know, uh, super vault times two. So times two. There's, and I'm just going to call this v. I'm going to get really sick of uh, typing that. So if, if I multiply by 2, okay, it looks good. It, this, this stuff makes much more sense in hex. So show it in hex. And uh, here's a big problem with uh, uh, this stuff. Getting more and more zeros. Every time I multiply by 2, I'm shifting the information in that register to the right. You do that enough, there is no information left in that register. Actually, in the you do it 32 times, and that's all over. 
Mm, not good. What if I multiply by 3? Slightly better? I mean, doesn't, doesn't look too bad, actually. And it seems to keep going a thousand times, at least. Anybody notice a pattern in the low digits? One, three, nine, B. These are the powers of three. I guess mine. You don't have some noticeable pattern. I mean, it's it's not adiabatic, right? So it's like you can't tell. I got this. I can't. I got this. How do I get that? Yeah. So so uh, so, so there's a couple problems with multiply generally. Once the information is leaking off to the right, in other words, you're making numbers much bigger, and if you throw away the digits to the right, and there's these, the high bits are, are just getting dropped out, they're gone. You just lost info from the, uh, the computation. Uh, the, the other problem is uh, the low bits only depend on the low bits, right? If, I, if, if you have this sort of standard school book multiplication algorithm, I'm going to calculate some big hex number, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm multiply it by 3, then, then the deal is, right, 3 times... Uh, So, so uh, all of the carries are going to basically be drag information. Again, is that right? That's left. I'm sorry. It's my right. Uh, so uh, uh, all the information is actually falling off the high side of that uh, that number, right? Uh, and, and and the low bits only depend on the low bits, right? As the, uh, the the final output here is just going to depend on that and that and nothing nothing else in the system, right? In other words, the uh, the high bits have all the entropy. The low bits have basically none. Is there an easy way to fix this, right? So multi actually, I'm surprised that a lot of linear congregational generators called Lima generators leave off the C part. You don't even need to add. You just multiply, which seems like really, whoa, that, that can work. Yeah, so, so the trick is if you just multiply, you actually multiplication alone is not actually that good. The multiplication combined with mod uh, turn, turns out to be relatively OK. So, uh, What's the difference here? If I take this thing mod, I don't know, some big number. So, there we are. 139B, uh, 139B, 139B. Because apparently that was not a good number to mod by. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to make it bigger. Okay, there we go. So here we got one 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 one, which usually is a bad sign if you get stuck on, on one digit. And then two five d five d. I mean, bouncing all over the place. Uh, why is it better to have a mod? What what's the advantage of a mod? It's not a mod. Make sure that well, it also makes sure that like the initial state is sort of preserved throughout. Yeah, uh, so I mean, the deal is, if I'm doing multiplication, all this good stuff is coming off of the high side. And uh, by default, you just truncate. You throw that stuff away. If I do a mod, right, this is so, so if, if there's, uh, so I'm, I'm modding by some smallish value here. If I mod by like a power of two, that doesn't actually help any, right? Uh, I have to mod by some, some weird number where it's going to be a certain, you know, these are actually contributing more values down there. If I subtract off an integral number of the, uh, the, the mods, this is actually changing the little bits, right, which is really uh, important. So, so, so the, I mean, the classic case is, what happens if I multiply by 3 and then take the answer mod 3? It's not going to do anything. Yeah. You get 0 no matter what number you started with. So this destroys all the entropy. Right now, if the thing you're multiplying and the thing you're modding are multiples of each other, then you're you're kind of in trouble here. So if I do, you know, uh, mod nine, well, I've, uh, I mean, I'm guaranteed that low digit is going to be zero. So if I do basically any multiple of three here, so one thousand and one times three, the problem with that is that it's a multiple of three. So I might have a state ten thousand, which is actually pretty good, but then I'm doing mod mod three. Looks great somehow. Actually, so we'll kick off the hex. I think the problem is these are all. Uh, I think there's a pattern still, which just takes really long. Yeah, I, I suspect I could multiply. 
Both sides by three. Unfortunately, there's always going to be a pattern. So I've got, if, if, uh, if my state variable is an int, I have 32 bits worth of state. That means the best I can hope for is to go around a couple billion times, and I'm going to eventually come back. But ho hopefully I can make it the whole way. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so, so Lehman random number generator, if I multiply by zero, what, uh, what's this going to give me? Zero times anything is zero. You can never escape. <laughs> so usually, just the, they suggest don't start at zero. That's not a good idea. Uh, so, so f folks have looked at this actually. So best uh, best combination of numbers is some relatively biggish number, and then some number that's relatively prime. So it uh, re relatively prime to that number. In fact, the more prime, more relatively prime it is, the better off you are. In fact, just a big prime is uh, uh, apparently the easiest way to get a, uh, uh, get a really long cycle. So lots of these numbers out there. So for example, um, min std rand zero. And I think they, they tell you. Yeah, so, so this is uh, this is from Smith and Miller, some extremely, I'm probably misremembering their names. Uh, I wish I was better at remembering names. So fam famous set of, uh, set of numbers here. So one multiplication, one mod. It is. I think that's a Mersenne prime. That's uh, that's actually two to the thirty-first minus one. So I have to start anywhere other than one. Uh, so so clearly, I mean, first time around, it's going to be sixteen thousand. That's just what you got. And then uh, let's see. I guess this should be an unsigned long. It's it's wrapped around, which is uh, not what you want. So, so, so there we are. So immediately you should ask yourself, well, okay, it doesn't look like it's stuck in a cycle. You look at like the low digit. Low digit is where these things go wrong if you really screwed up your, uh, your choice of numbers and they're like 999. Nine, nine. It's either going to be 999 nine basically forever, or uh, uh, if, if it actually just starts, starts being something different, then you're actually doing okay. Now, it looks like uh, lots of nines in a row, and then two threes in a row, and two sevens in a row. You should have a certain number of things in a row that's, that should that should be happening. Now the question is, uh, are the statistics off? So what's the easy way to figure out what the statistics are? Not getting up, spreadsheet or pencil and paper, counting. That hurts. We have computers. Right? So have the computers do the work. So so say I mean look at. Uh, it's it's kind of interesting because these things will tend to go wrong. Like uh, if you look at uh, powers of two, powers of ten, powers of twelve, right? Uh, if, if you write the number down in base twelve notation, maybe you'll see some weird pattern that wasn't wasn't there in others. So so you, you can you can try a couple of uh, number bases and just just look at how often the uh, uh, where the digits are distributed. So uh, if you try this. I've tried this. Uh, you get the following stuff. So we've got. Uh, so I, I look like my system ran, and uh, step one. I mean, to to basic randomness quality check. Uh, cycle through and and see what uh, just see if there's an obvious visual pattern in there. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't look like it. Uh, I I uh, took them all base four, right? So not quite binary. Uh, and then it turns out, yeah, you get zero, one, two, and three. And yeah, that was a little more often, but you should expect some random variance in these things, right? They're not, uh, uh, they're not all going to be the same. So again, base 10 looks pretty good. Base 16 looks pretty good. Uh, if I look at uh, C++ default random, it turns out default random is this. Right? This is the, uh, uh, that's that's the implementation. And if you look at the digits, they're actually pretty pretty decent. Uh, the performance is atrocious, I think, because I was using a distribution. So, uh, and again, uh, good, good, pretty, pretty good looking. What they quote as glibc rand, I'm surprised by this. This is in Wikipedia as glibc rand. It's, it's not evidently because a the numbers are totally different than you get out of glibc rand. And then here's, uh, here's a bit of a problem. I look at that thing in base four, and I get exactly 100,000 after doing 400,000 tests. What does that tell you? On a business. Yeah. <laughs> How is it possible that you get exactly 100,000? And it uh, turns out if you look at the hex output, 
same deal. Maybe it goes, I don't know, if it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm, it's cycling through some set of numbers. Yeah. yeah, so it's easy enough to say, well, okay, let's, uh, there, if, is there some cycle of numbers? And I have typed this in at some point. Check it. I, I actually just dump out below. I have way too many save files in that run. Uh, log, and I think it was template 11b that I, late last night, uh, which of these actually work. So, so here, system ran, th these are the low hex digits. So this is the sort of, again, human being uh, uh, analysis. Those are pretty random, and uh, default random is pretty good. Uh, percent twister. So I, I tried a million of these things. So what, what they quote is glibc rand, which I don't think it actually is. So, so here, here we are. Anybody see the pattern? So the, the, somehow the way I like I look for something that kind of looks memorable, like FC5, and then just look for that in other places. Yeah, that's a totally repeating uh, cycle. And it's, you know, it's like 16 long, 32. There's the because it's only 16. So 16 digits, right? So it cycles through all 16 in a cycle of 16. I mean, that's sure. Yeah, okay. uh, but the problem is, that means uh, how much entropy is there in the low hex digit there? Basically zero, right? It's just working its way through a 16 long pattern, so if they know where they are, you are in the pattern, you're, you're in trouble. It's not, uh, not going to work anymore. So, uh, there, there we are. Uh, let's see, I, this one's funny. Uh, it's, it's dirt because... Uh, I, I mistyped this one, right? Uh, I, I was pulling this straight out of the, the parameters for glibc rand. So the parameters for glibc rand, right? You've got uh, some things you're adding, multiplying, etc. So here's the here, here's what was quoted as glibc rand. I presume at some point it was glibc rand. The thing they add each time is one, two, three, four, five. And rather than copying and pasting it like I did that one, I just typed it in one, two, three, four, missed the five. This 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 it looks like it shouldn't be much difference there, right? Uh, but it turns out we're adding now an even number because you're adding an even number. If it gets stuck on evens, it's it's stuck. And uh, so if we look at the sort of derp uh, random number generator, so the the digits are very bad, right? It's always output it puts even numbers. It never outputs odd numbers, which is really a problem, uh, right? And uh, it, it gets worse. There's there's a really famous one called uh, let's see, Randu. So Randu is, uh, you multiply it by like almost 65,000. In hex, it's 65,000, 64K plus 3 is, is the thing you're multiplying by. And it turns out uh, it has no problem with even numbers, It because well, it always has odd numbers. That's just its thing. Uh, yeah. So, so it turns out there's a whole spectrum of random number generators. Actually, if you look at the little hex digit, it was a four cycle. Which really is not the kind of thing you want out of a random number generator. So, right, uh, you, you look at how, how many hex digits are used. There's only four hex digits that are actually in use. None of the others are. So, yeah, uh, bad, bad news. Uh, so, 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 the surprising thing about the performance of these things, if you look at like an atrocious one like Randu, it takes five nanoseconds. If you look at, uh, I don't know, a decent one like Park, Park Miller is pretty, pretty good. That's min ran zero. Uh, you know, this uh, looks pretty decent. It's also five nanoseconds. It's fairly just a matter of picking the constants properly. Uh, so, uh, lots of uh, lots of different random generators out there. Well, why am I even saying this if uh, I keep telling you don't use these directly for encryption? The deal is you often use something like this to generate. So, so right, you start with the uh, the uh, the session key. You need to generate the actual keys that are used in every step of RC5, for example. Well, typically you use something like this. Uh, you use some some uh, pseudo random number generator, and if it happens that you've you've picked a bad one because I don't know Wikipedia steered you wrong, then uh, it's it's fairly easy to end up with much less entropy in your random in your uh, in your keys than you thought you had, right? If if that's actually what your low low digits are doing, uh, you could certainly get stuck in a cycle that. Uh, 
that, that could be that, that could could be impacting the uh, the security of your cipher. So I guess the other reason I said this is because back uh, back in the day, so my first uh, one of my first experiences of crypt, uh, crypto stuff, I wanted to write my own crypto algorithm. So here's 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 uh, the Dr. Lawler crypto algorithm, and this is. Uh, So I, I guess the core of the thing was basically just two linear congruential random number generators. The congruence is a little bit weak. Uh, the what's the congruence? What, what's the mod part here? There is no mod part. Right? If, if I do unsigned int arithmetic, it's implicitly mod like uh, 4 billion, right? Uh, so that, that was fairly common. This is what I looked like back, back in the day. No goatee. I still looked really goofy. You can see how ripped I was. Like a concentration camp victim or something, but yeah. Uh, so... Uh, <clears throat> So this I really screwed up, right? The single XOR thing, definitely a bad idea. I mean, clearly not, uh, not good. Actually, this stuff I was fairly happy with. So uh, you have where you are in the random number C. You have a multiplier and you have an adder, right? So it turns out there's 96 bits per generator, and there's two generators that both XOR against each other. So total key space is actually relatively OK. I have a couple of entropy sources. so. Uh, at, at the time, this was Mac OS 7. Uh, and it, it didn't have dev RAND, it didn't have dev. Uh, it, the, 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 there's no way to get random numbers out of the, out of the OS. That was fine. Uh, you could actually, so I had a couple of crazy things. Like I just looked at the address of various operating system stuff. And nowadays, that I don't think it would be much randomness. Maybe with address based random layout randomization, there would be nowadays. The, the old Mac OS actually was really uh, non shared memory. Remember, we get compacted now and then. Uh, operating system stuff would move around right, to make space for other stuff. No, no virtual memory, no paging uh, back in the day. So, so th this stuff was actually relatively unpredictable. So was, not how, how many times has your, uh, your system heap been compacted? I took the address of you know, uh, different 37 OS. I took the tick count, which was 60 to the second. That was as high a resolution of timers they had at the time. Right? So a high resolution timer as an entry source, right? so that's relatively OK. Uh, the bold are the sort of post comments, and these were the uh, uh, contemporaneous comments, right? So just like good arbitrary numbers, I don't know what that means, but uh, sort of semi semi random numbers. I, I think the good was that these actually worked okay to make uh, to make stuff. I took the passphrase, basically, I, I just repeat the passphrase to uh, fill up the 40 characters worth of buffer, and now all, all that did was is just sort of some cyclic shifting of the uh, of the passphrase, different moving passphrase around by different amounts, right? And and this was because uh, yeah. Really, this, the, the low four bits of the passphrase, I, I call it the five bits of the passphrase, uh, have to have most randomness, right? This, if I have digits, you know, uh, letters, then it's mostly the low bits that things are changing, and the high bits are going to be kind of crap. So, so uh, I want to make 32 bit constants out of eight bit numbers, so kind of shift those figures around some. And, uh, right, so, so uh, do, do, do our shifting. Uh, so, aside from the XR business, which really is no good. Uh, anybody see any any major flaws? I mean, the key explicit key enumeration would be really hard because that's a lot of data. Long is only four bytes at the time, but that's still uh, 192 bits. You're multiplying and adding, I'm multiplying and adding, and I don't have a wraparound. Yeah, apparently, because mod was really expensive at the time, it's still fairly expensive. Yeah, um, what happens if I multiply two? I just took all the entropy that I had and carefully produced there, and I just shifted it over one. And the high bit, gone. Hey, that's a problem. What happens if I multiply zero? Yeah, then there's nothing left of, uh, of that. And you're just adding, right? So I'm XORing by a constant, which unfortunately probably would have passed my t my my extensive tests, which are basically like encrypt a file full of zeros, and like, dude, it's just random crap. 
Sweet. <laughs> right. Uh, that was yeah. So so uh, so so it happens that uh, depending on what your patch phrase was, you might actually blow away most of the good stuff in the you know the, the key zero which is bad. Right. So, so you, you get into with weak keys, and and there are so, so periodically uh, uh, there are problems where people realize that hey you know what if we encrypt with the passphrase of uh, I don't know Fred. Then the encryption algorithm does nothing. It literally does nothing, because, <laughs> for example, my multiplier turned out to be zero, my adder turned out to also be zero, or I'm adding 17 and then I'm XORing by 17 again, which ends up doing. <laughs> uh, and, and, and maybe uh, maybe the first uh, the first hundred bytes of the file that you managed to look at, those are, are quite random because so we haven't quite trashed all of our entropy yet, and then eventually we shift it all away, and then we're left with nothing. So. Yeah, uh, you don't want an encryption algorithm works like this. Right? So, so, so big problem here. I'm using destructive operations like a multiply without a uh, wraparound. Right? There's no uh, in inverse operation. What? So, so questions about this? Random number generation for crypto? Don't. <laughs> uh, virtually everybody I think has this idea. There's a lot of things wrong with it. <laughs> It, it, it's, it, it turns out it's uh, it's really hard to come up with multipliers and adders that really work. In fact, oftentimes the adder is zero, so you do a multiplier and a mod. Ones that don't have some weird uh, hidden flaw, like some digits are repeating or something. That's uh, that's hard to hard to come up with. Question. You say you don't use them, but is there if you have to use them? Is there a good recommended not as bad as all the others? Yeah. So I mean, to take uh, I think I hope that link to like uh, yeah, what Lemaire. So, so Mersenne Twister is pretty darn good. It uh, the reason called the Mersenne Twister is it's like uh, the, the the period of the thing is like two to the that. <laughs> Which is huge, <laughs> right? It, it, it uh, first thing it does is it starts up and it, it uh, the, the initialization allocates like I forget, 600 integers or something, and it's like enough bits to store that. <laughs> and uh, and, and uh, it's 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 curiously, I mean, it's it's a surprisingly fast algorithm because it actually is only it's only uh, interacting with two of these integers at a time to make another integer. And it's basically just working its way through this big uh, this big list. And Mersenne Twister is quite quite good. Uh, it's been been really well analyzed, quite fast. I mean, startup is kind of slow. Don't bother writing the thing because it's really a mess to, to actually write. Uh, th th there are some of these. I mean, th th there, there are times like uh, on the GPU, I want to generate a bunch of random numbers for stuff. And uh, uh, some, if a part Miller serves good the test of time, it is, in fact, the default random engine, uh, part Miller or the, uh, 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 the, the there's, a, there's another multiplier there, or, yeah, min, min SD ran zero. Use a slightly different multiplier, but uh, it's relatively okay. But, and there's some real stinkers people keep recommending, right? Like, you, like DRAN48. I kept using this for some reason and uh, really noticed that part. So that's embarrassing. Uh, yeah, and, and, and that one's just famously bad. <clears throat> yeah, so, so you know, I, I think up here is definitely okay. And, and they're, I mean, they're built into C11. It really is, there's almost no effort required to, uh, to, make, uh, to make random numbers that way. So definitely, yeah, uh, do that. And then the, I guess the, the flip side of this is if you need random digits, srand is not your friend, right? Rand is not your friend. If you need real random digits, I mean, on, on Linux, or any, any Unix box, right? Uh, OS, OS 10 has this too. They have uRandom. It, it's hashes of the system entropy pool. And then on Windows, I don't know why they made it so freaking complicated. But it's, that's a recurring theme in Windows API stuff. So. You, you need a handle to a cryptography provider. You acquire a context to a cryptography provider, saying basically, yeah, I want one that can do random numbers. But you don't suck flies, basically. Yeah. But if, if you don't pass these, it fails. Yeah. So, and I had to determine that experimentally. And, yeah. and I, mean, I think I would have said that so crypt gen random, if you really want people to use it, you would just pass zero there and would say, oh, you want the default system randomness pool, great. I'll be happy to do this. So yeah, uh, uh, crypt gen random. I mean the so, so the, 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 there are all, all these people say like, well, I don't trust crypt gen random. It comes from Windows. Maybe it's uh, secretly sending a copy of this stuff off to the NSA. 
<clears throat> I say your program is doomed if you don't trust your OS. Why? If you don't trust your OS, they can just read your memory. I just like Control C. They can't memory. read my memory. I am encrypting it. They read the key out of memory. <laughs> they read how you encrypt it. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, at some point, they just, I mean, I guess you could have a chip with some weird baked-in key that somehow knows the hardware. Except the only way you could talk to the chip is to ask the OS, hey, can I talk to my chip, please? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, you're totally talking to your yeah. crypto chip. Absolutely. Well, yeah, uh, like with virtualization, I mean, you can do an I/O operation to the device, and it's certainly possible to intercept that, right? So, I mean, it's uh, th th again, th there's this unresolved question: Is it possible to to trust programs on untrusted hardware? And the sort of provisional answer is not in the usual way, because <laughs> I mean most programs it's it's so you know the what makes them operate is machine code and memory. The OS can read, modify, and you know uh, uh, change that, that machine code any way it wants. Right? That's uh, that's disaster. Right? Uh, the, the program is going to store data in files, registers, memory. The OS does all of those things, right? And, and just, I mean, as, as part of the legitimate operations, is constantly, you know, uh, monitoring your files. And I mean, the only way you get to the files is via the operating system. I mean, you essentially, have, it's it's hard to imagine how you could keep secrets from it. Yeah. So, untrusted hardware. You mean untrusted software running on the hardware? Right? Now, like, uh, if you can run your own hard, your own software on the hardware, it's fine, right? It's like, mm -hmm. I take your computer, which I don't know if I trust, but if I like boot up my own OS, good. Did it really boot your OS though, or did it boot your OS into a virtual machine that's constantly screwing with your OS? Or maybe you have your hardware just, and maybe it's shunted. Yeah. Like every memory write is shunted to some device that just records it. <laughs> and, I and, trust and, the BIOS was really the BIOS. Yeah, I guess. it's it's actually really frustrating. Yeah, because it's I mean it's easy enough to put in like like red pill right is the uh, uh, red pill blue pill the uh, uh, right. You can you can boot the machine into what looks like the operating system as an operating system, and it's actually running as a guest operating. Right? It's 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 been virtualized, and then everything it does, and, and and the thing is, there's no way for it to look at the hardware and say, hey, this is the matrix. I'm not really, I mean, you, you, there's there's no 100% really. You can look at the timings, but then I mean, it starts to be like, how do you know what the time actually is? Maybe it's lying to you about what the time is. Right? Uh, it's tough to pull a convincing uh, uh, simulation on a uh, especially sophisticated program. Say you want to run on something poorly implemented in the, in the hypervisor, mm -hmm. send an no, instruction no. to the thing, uh, get it back, know, like you know the result, you compare it and say, oh, yeah. this is wrong, therefore it must be the simulation. Yeah. It yeah. seems like at uh, one level, at some, at some level, you're going to be like, unplug the battery, unplug the power, make sure there's no other power source, there's no way it's running anything at all. and then Except they've flashed your BIOS. To run the, their firmware, okay. Yeah. The, uh, actually, I mean, it's uh, it's it's appalling how many places there are to hide in a computer, right? That it was the the uh, okay, right? Uh, the, the BIOS runs before your OS, so game over. Uh, the uh, the microcode on the CPU, right? You can flash update the microcode on the CPU, which sounds like a terrible idea to start with. But uh, I mean, that, that uh, you can imagine a sufficiently sophisticated attacker that will actually say like, yeah, it looks like a perfectly normal CPU. There's essentially no way of looking at even like clock cycle level timings or electrical schematics or anything to see if anything's wrong except that one little blip when you execute the thing that we're really interested in, and that blip is designed to like uh, just send out extra noise on the uh, the motherboard lines that our satellites are going to pick up. I mean, it's like tin foil hat territory. Right? <laughs> so surprising. Yeah. So, so uh, this is about as good as you can get, as far as we know. Uh, it's definitely miles better than SRAN, right? And and people keep you know. Uh, High quality software organizations, you know, Netscape was basically on top of the world at the time when uh, they managed to just totally hose their first implementation of HTTPS and uh, doesn't, doesn't actually give you any randomness because it ends up being as random time. And virtually everything else was predictable, uh, which is frustrating. So, yeah, uh, uh, Debian will, will definitely uh, uh, it will help you. And uh, lots of places where you don't really think about the fact that I need a random number here. So, so I mean, I, it turns out I need a random number is nowhere in the comments. I mean, these are arbitrary numbers. 
th this was stuff that, I mean, nowadays I think I would have hopefully commented in saying, like, uh, we need day just an initialization vector. It turns out these unpredictable things, uh, it, it, if I have an encryption scheme that depends on stuff that I just make up, right, or uh, unpredictable stuff, how do you decrypt? Encrypt the past stuff. All of this depends on the past rates, right, which hopefully is going to get typed in again. This stuff is not really recoverable. So it has to go in the file somewhere, like preferably at the end after the checksum. Wait a sec, how do you decrypt it starting from the beginning if you don't know how to start? There's often a crypto header at the beginning, right? Where you, yeah. and, and then how, how much can you protect those things? I mean, maybe these are protected with the passphrase. Maybe it's vice versa that the way that I uh, uh, mess up the passphrase to get the decryption is based on those things, and these are just sent in the clear text because they're just arbitrary numbers, right? They're not really revealing much of anything. I, I guess uh, in this case, maybe I'm revealing stuff about. Uh, maybe that's dangerous. I, I don't know what the, the danger would be, but uh, some some something else may uh, may have a, have a problem. So yeah, uh, uh, Debian random. I mean, the, the the conventional wisdom is I can take bytes from Debian random. I can just post them on the you know my public website, and no problem, right? That's that's actually totally okay. Here here's a theoretical attack that right? Debian random uh, is spitting out the cryptographic. It's it's usually like a hash uh, code of the uh, the bytes of the the system secrets, right? So I've got all these secrets uh, inside the kernel, and they're used to generate like you know secret keys. They used to generate like session you know session keys or you know stuff that uh, I just am broadcasting clear text. What if somebody could look at the clear text stuff and figure out what the shared secret is, so that uh, then they would be able to just recover and predict uh, future versions of the private keys? That'd be bad. This is the rationale for Dev Random. So Dev Random says, here's the secret, right? Every time I pull some bytes out of that, and it takes exactly the same interface as you ran, it takes the hash. It just says uh, we have slightly less secrets there, right? In, in an information theoretic sense, right? We had 300 bits of entropy in our pool, and you pull out 64 bits, you now have, you know, if you make numbers easier. You pull out 200 bits, you have 100 bits of entropy left. You want another 200 bits of entropy? What what are you doing? You don't have them yet, so it just sits there to blocks, right? It, it blocks and it waits for more entropy to arrive from uh, you know, uh, uh, timing or, or you know, all of its different entropy sources. And, and uh, so, so the deal with the random is that it's actually quite slow. Quite slow. And uh, so cat, uh, random. That's all you get. This is the rate at which my machine is generating entropy, which a few, you know, uh, I don't know, 10 bits a second or something. It's, uh, it's not 100 bits a second. Give me your IP and go faster. <laughs> yeah, and I, I've, I've seen it where it's like you just need to waggle the mouse more. That, that doesn't it's actually. Be more, be more, it's more. It's yeah, you, you think there's lots of entropy from the webcam and the audio and stuff, but I, I don't know. It has some really restrictive definition of entropy, so it's definitely guaranteed to be safe regardless of whatever. And if somebody could predict your webcam image, like seriously, <laughs> like the lighting in this corner is going to really be, you know, that's an open <laughs> secret, right? Anybody with a photometer and you know enough uh, uh, science could predict the CC. I don't know. Uh, hard, hard to believe. So, so the problem is, uh, if you use dev random, you will block. Your use of dev random will actually block other people who are trying to use the dev random pool. And 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 the deal is, uh, SHA-256, if they can break SHA-256, I said this before, give up if they can break SHA-256. If they can look at dev random, they can look at that crap, and come up with what's in your entropy pool, it's game over, man. <laughs> I mean, <it's>, they... <laughs> They're good enough. Probably nothing you're going to do is actually going to going to stop them. So that's the uh, that, that that's the gist of, of uh, this page. Don't use dev random. Don't. <laughs> so this is this is a myth. Yeah. Uh, so so. Uh, random numbers. Hopefully that's all we need to talk about. Random numbers. Uh, we we can generate uh, good random numbers from you know these uh, these sources, and then we can use them uh, to, to to initialize good ciphers, and then stuff is good. Uh, the final, final thing about uh, randomness and pseudo-randomness, uh, th there's some homeworks that, for goodness sakes, hopefully I'm going to get out the door today. Uh, it, uh, I, I, keep, I keep fighting my way through doing this. Uh, it, uh, so, so the idea is with the, the, the homeworks, uh, you go to crypto 
and this is going to be linked off of the uh, the, uh, the the web page. Crypto is crypto that is designed to be broken. It's supposed to be crap. Right. Uh, so so the deal is, you will go there and you will get a pseudo random uh, uh, problem. Right. So you will get like the uh, here's the cipher text, and I will say the plain text is one one uh, ASCII letter. Right. So you can either decrypt it based on you know knowing what uh, how the how the encryption algorithm works. If I give you the key, if I don't give you the key, right, then you can try different keys, right? You can uh, I mean brute force plain text, brute force key, right? Uh, so so uh, try these things. So so I, I've been uh, thinking along these lines, and it's funny because I don't use dev random, and a lot of times so so the reason I don't use dev random is because then every time you ran the homework, you would get a different problem, which would make it really hard to answer. It's like here's the web page. It says like your previous answer was incorrect. The new you know uh, hash is this, and you're like, well, crap. I can solve that one, but then you'll just move the goalpost again. <laughs> so I, I have to do pseudo randomness so that every time you log in and you get the same homework problem, which is good. But if somebody else logs in, unless you're using your account, then uh, you're going to get a different problem. So uh, that's the idea. That's uh, that's hopefully coming out. It's clearly not going to be due Friday because that would be crazy. Uh, next Friday, Monday. What what uh, when do you prefer having homeworks due or never? So. Mm -hmm. Next Friday, next Friday, Friday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thanks for coming, and uh, thanks for thanks for calling in. I think we're done. Hopefully, this works for you guys. Thanks for all up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.